This might feel cold, the doctor said. But before I could ask what might feel cold, my 20-something self was given a glimpse of my old man future and the exams I will need simply for being an old man. The stomach pains I'd been experiencing in my early 20s were a first, so when I made the doctor's appointment, I had no idea what to expect. It started with poking and prodding on my stomach and lower back. And then I was instructed to drop my trousers and bend over the examination table. Definitely didn't expect this. At the end of the exam, the doctor wordlessly placed a box of tissues next to me and left me on my own to figure out what to do with them. <laughs> so I did with them what I thought was needed, and I wiped the sweat off my brow after I pulled my pants up. <laughs> well, your prostate's fine. How's your diet, he asked. I'm not on one, my upside-down brain said. The doctor just looked at me. No, I mean, what sort of food do you eat on a regular basis? I told him mostly pizza and gas station food for my delivery job. He frowned, told me to change my diet, then asked if I was under stress. I left wondering if I needed a finger submarining up my ass to know I was under stress and eating like shit. <laughs> that curiosity was coldly interrupted when I sat down in the driver's seat and immediately realized what the tissues were for. Uh-huh. I drove the entire way home with one butt cheek lifted off the seat. The stomach pains went away and I thought no more of it. About two decades later, I crested the ripe age of 41 years old and was honestly surprised I made it that far. My bad food intake for over 20 years hadn't changed and my stress in life went from no clue what I was doing in my 20s to no fucking clue what I was doing in my 40s. <laughs> One summer morning while in the bathroom, I pushed a little too much and felt an extremely painful burn in my ass. I wiped and found blood. Oh, that can't be good, I said with a wince. The pain slowly ebbed away throughout the morning, but I didn't tell anyone about it. I just went on with my day in summer. Some mornings I had issues, some I didn't. I eventually swallowed my fear and sought medical treatment. My appointment was a six foot two tall general practitioner with fingers that could have wrapped around a basketball. <laughs> and, and once again, I was getting the same old man exam from 20 years prior, this time though, a bit closer to the old man threshold. During the exam, I swear Dr. J was tickling my tonsils by way of my back door. <laughs> when he was done, he handed me tissues, and it not being my first rodeo, I cleaned the right place. <laughs> Looks like you have some hemorrhoids, he said. I'm gonna prescribe you suppositories. Ever taken those? No, I replied and grimaced. Is there no other way to get rid of these? Don't worry, he said with a smile. They're small, waxy, bullet-shaped. It won't be bad. Inside the CVS, under harsh fluorescent lights next to the stand with cheap bifocals and reading glasses, the pharmacist scream asked, as if I was hard of hearing, if I'd ever used suppositories before. <laughs> I should have told the truth, but I just said yes so I could get them and leave. I left wondering if things could get any worse. It turns out, the answer was yes. Yes, they could. <laughs> the, first inter the first attempt with the suppository was a literal mess. My nerves caused me to not put it up far enough into the void, so it just turned into a melted, waxy steroid puddle between my butt cheeks. <laughs> Soon enough, though, like with the tissues, I became a pro with suppositories. Fortunately, the hemorrhoids went away. Unfortunately, that was a ruse. On an early summer morning in 2020, while in the shower after a bloody, painful bowel movement, I felt something small and painful protruding out of my asshole. <laughs> After drying myself, I sat down and the pain went away. Later that day, I felt around and the bulge was gone. For the next two years, I managed to live with a recurring and disappearing daily bulge that slowly became worse. Thanks to gravity, just standing to wash dishes was unbearable. Finally, in March of this year, I made another appointment and was ultimately prescribed more suppositories. Hello, old friends. <laughs> this time, however, they didn't work, so I was sent to a proctologist. While waiting for the doctor to come in the room, I remember the time my father told me he had to go to a proctologist in his early 40s. I asked why, worried there might be a family health issue I should be worried about. He said it was because his shit didn't stink. <laughs> True story. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna feel a little pressure and cold sensation when I put the scope in, the doctor said during the exam. And this was a markedly different phrase from the previous warnings I got, and I actually felt at ease. The exam took 10 seconds. 
He then pulled a scope out and, to my surprise, proceeded to wipe my asshole clean. <laughs> now, I don't know if any of you have ever had your ass professionally wiped, but I highly recommend it. <laughs> it, it was the most comforting thing I have ever experienced from a doctor. There's probably some psycho babble about it most likely being a memory of being wiped as a baby. But <laughs> as someone who's been forced to do it on my own for well over 40 years, I had no idea I was an ass-wiping amateur at best. <laughs> so you have three prolapsed internal hemorrhoids, he said. But I think we can take care... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, that's my reaction. But I think we can t take care of them next week with a procedure called rubber band ligation. I like to think I have a good grasp on words. <laughs> ligation, though, uh, that, that was a new one. And I didn't like the way it sounded. Ligation. Following week, I got my explanation. What I'm going to do is grab hold of the hemorrhoid, which you won't feel. Then I'm going to use a tool to place a tiny rubber band around the neck of it. There are no pain sensors there, which is why there's no pain. You'll feel some pressure after that. This rubber band will cut off the blood flowing to it, which will cause it to shrivel up and fall off on its own during a bowel movement after a few days or a week. <sighs> Ligation. <laughs> With that info now bouncing around my panicking mind, I again got in the jackknife position on the exam table. <laughs> Suddenly, I no longer felt old inside. I felt like a scared child, wondering if the punishment really fit the crime. I gripped the thin white paper that lined the exam table as if it was the blanket I had as a five-year-old and just hoped the beating would be quick. Okay, here's that pressure and cold again, the doc said. I'm gonna grab one of them now. Let me know if you feel it. Look, there's a lot about the body that I think is pretty fucking disgusting, but I have to admit, the fact that I didn't feel him grab something inside my asshole was kind of interesting. <laughs> I then heard a snap and immediately felt the aforementioned pressure. He pulled the, the scope out and the rubber band snapper out. Okay, I'm going back in, he said, as if he was crawling tunnels looking for booby traps. <laughs> a few seconds later, snap, got it. He removed the hardware from my backside, then came that glorious cleanup, but I couldn't enjoy it as much as last time. My body could tell something inside me was being strangled. I left with written instructions on how to spend the next week. I read everything, but my eyes glazed over one very important medicine I needed, but never got. Laxatives. Yeah, another reaction. I wasn't able to shit for two days. I knew I probably should have, but my brain was so very opposed to the idea. Where I was told would only be a pressure was goddamn beehive, and shitting would only stir the nest. But I knew this was how the ass wranglers fell off, so at some point, I would have to. Eventually, the time came. For the first minute on the toilet, I could feel the physical urge to go, but I was still constipated, mostly from fear. Then the rabbit dropping happened and my body erupt, erupt, erupted into pain. My hand found the wall to steady me from falling face first off the toilet. Sweat began leaking out of every pore of my body. A sound I'd never made before came from my gut out of my mouth and into the echo chamber of the room. This was not how I wanted to die on the crapper like Elvis, but without the drugs. <laughs> After a few minutes of pain I didn't know existed before, I knew I had to get up. But the idea of scraping toilet paper out across a choking, angry, bulging hemorrhoid made my skin crawl, just like yours is now. <laughs> so I made the decision to go from the toilet to the shower. And here's where I learned just how much we use the sphincter muscle in everything we do. In trying to stand up, pain shot up from my back and into my neck and head where it exploded into stars. <laughs> my legs shook, so I gripped the sink to steady myself. Like an upset baby with a dirty diaper, I took a couple open leg waddles to the tub, turned the shower on, then stepped in. In the shower, blood poured down the drain, as did my desire to keep on living. <laughs> I stood there shriek moaning through gritted teeth while the water cleansed my body, but not my mind. I eventually turned the shower off and left the tub. As I stood dripping water on the bathroom floor and shuddering uncontrollably from the pain and shock, I thought a distraction would help, so I called my friend Christy, who was in an airport and boarding a flight. 
In hindsight, I wasn't really looking for a distraction. I was a middle-aged man, alone, and feeling like a vulnerable child in physical pain. What I needed was a parental figure I could be vulnerable with. I didn't feel like I'd call, I could call my own mother in that sort of moment. And my father, who was at the time in the hospital after suffering a major stroke, I hadn't spoken to in nearly a decade. It's OK, Christy said. This is going to pass. Just remember to breathe. For 10 minutes while she boarded the plane, Christy used her soothing mother voice while trying to calm me down. Eventually, she had to put her phone in airplane mode and hang up. And I would find out later the woman sitting next to her on the plane asked if the person she was talking to was OK. So as not to embarrass me with a total stranger, she said her friend was pregnant and having contractions. <laughs> the woman smiled and said, well, I hope it comes out healthy. <laughs> I looked again at the written instructions. Did I miss something? I was taking the pain medications and instructed, but I was told there wouldn't be too much pain. Then I saw the line about the laxatives. I quickly door dashed some laxatives and within 30 minutes was taking the first few. My body slowly stopped shaking, but I was physically exhausted. I gobbled down a weed gummy and slept for the next four hours. <laughs> when I woke up, the pain was down to what felt like a paper cut in my taint, just one being made every 10 <laughs> seconds. The laxatives eventually kicked in two days later, and for the first time in over two years, I took a pain-free shit. Even the bulge was gone. Yeah, applaud that, <laughs> applaud that, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I never thought I'd get applause for taking a shit. This is great. I love it. I had never cried for joy on a toilet before until that overwhelming moment. It was a slight burn, but within days, even that was gone. Two weeks after the procedure, I had my first two shit day in what felt like forever. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a freedom I didn't know I missed. And hell, just a few weeks ago, I took three in one day just because I could. It's great. I admit, I've taken my gut for granted for a long time. Discovering California burritos and bottled Mexican Cokes when I moved here 14 years ago probably didn't help either. But my eyes are much more open now to the coup my body can throw when I treat it wrong. These days, I go to the gym and eat salads. Why oh, the fuck am I kidding? Gyms smell weird and salads are for rabbits. Anybody want to get some tots after this? Adam Greenfield and his little friend.